welcome to the state of survival. Today we're going to be taking a look at Rust and how it set itself apart inside of the survival gaming community. Six days from now, Rust will have been out for nearly 10 years. And when initially it came out, it came out almost as a Daisy clone. But it quickly set itself apart from Daisy as it tried to tread its own path. Yarl, what do you know or understand about Rust as a game itself? Well, in my experience of Rust, even early on when I was playing it, it's more centered around base building and fast paced combat. Um, the crafting trees, uh, I love the tech trees it used to level up with the scrap to get the schematics. So it kind of gives you a direction, whether you're playing solo or with multiple people and gives you that variety. Um, and for those who play this game, what I call like dedicated players, they've built a base that's amazing and they've unlocked all this stuff. Rust even provides you with an app that notifies you when your base is being attacked if you're not online. So it's a really cool, fun PvP survival experience. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. Rust is definitely, like you said, it's a very fast uh, kind of paced survival experience, and it has a lot of cool mechanics in it. Um, I feel that Rust itself leans more towards the I'm a more PvP centrically focused game than a, a I would say survival against the elements, which we've talked about in the past before, being one of the things that makes some survival games really enjoyable and other games not so enjoyable. So it's really cool that Rust has kind of even though it's only 10, it's 10 years old, actually, I shouldn't say only 10 years old. 10 years is a long time for Rust um, or any game out there to still be playable. But like you were just telling me before we started that there were servers out there with like a thousand people still playing it and like on just one server, which is crazy to think about. An official, so really interesting. mind you, an official <laughs> server with official. a thousand players, <laughs> which is nuts. Yeah, you know, it's just, yeah, it's crazy, right? Like, yeah, because Rust is really, I, I shame pay people who call it a survival game. It's kind of like diet survival, like Medieval Dynasty or Seven Days to Die. It has its own identity and its own elements, or as I like to describe it, PUBG with extra steps. But if you like fast-paced gameplay, if you like rolling with a team, and for me, I think the value of Rust is you could pick it up, play it a couple hours, and put it down. Um, and, and it kind of caters to both audiences. You get those that are dedicated, that know every trick, that know the best bases, that build elaborate traps, or you just get a mob of naked people running around with rocks, and that's still a viable strategy. So I find what made Rust break into its own stride was it didn't try to become better than DayZ. It wasn't trying to become they they chose early on that, hey, you know what? DayZ is DayZ. Let's go ahead and actually make our own game, a game that we can be very happy with, and we don't want to compete with DayZ anymore because there's no need to. And I find a lot of early access games that are supposed to be DayZ killers end up actually coming to this realization that the way they're going to succeed, and Rust is very big proof of that, is that they don't need to be better than DayZ. They have to be their own. They have to be their own beautiful, wonderful, and sometimes in Rust's case, chaotic game because of all the craziness that can go on there. But Rust truly dove into the PvP side of things. It truly made survivability a second thought where the PvP and your fellow man is where the real danger began. And that's where the danger should be all the time on Rust. You know, you're not worried about a bear busting through your walls. You're worried about someone blowing your support from below and, you know, shooting a bazooka up there, right? So it's really interesting that Rust really went that direction and kind of, like you said, uh, treaded its own path. Yeah, and, and, and on that note, too, I think when it first released, of course, there were very positive experiences with it. But when you advertise yourself as the next DayZ killer, which let's admit, like you said, that was Rust's intention when it released. When you play that and you're like, OK, there's food and water, but I can't get sick. You know, the damage types are like radiation and poison and, you know, you have bleed effects. But realistically, there was never survival wasn't their strong point. However, I dare say and I challenge anyone who has a different opinion. I want to hear your comments below what you think and tell me if I'm wrong, but I dare say that the combat is a lot more responsive and stable than Daisy. 
So it made sense when their survival kind of stunk compared to survival games of that era. But their combat was more akin to like that fast paced Call of Duty combat that was really popular back then. You enter a fork in the road. Well, which way do you go? Do you continue to chase the pursuit to actually make this a pure blooded survival game with diseases and illnesses and different weather types? Or do you follow what you're doing really well and breaking the mold and delve into that combat? And I think I think they made the right call. Yeah, the combat does have some other interesting elements in it, where it's your character stays in the server even when you log out. So your character doesn't just disappear with all the stuff on it. You can easily get killed while you're sleeping. And then, you know, there's other things that are, have been mentioned in the past to me, which is the combat of early game versus late game uh, is a little bit, it's not unbalanced because they purposely did it this way, but it's definitely not like somebody could easily have a more primitive uh, type of pistol, like an improvised pistol versus a guy with an, you know, a better uh, weapon. They're just going to always uh, win the guy with the better gear because of the armor or whatever else they're wearing. Where games like DayZ, it doesn't matter if you have a sport or whatever. If you get that headshot, you probably can take them out. So it's I kind of could not agree more. I could not agree more. The thing I love about DayZ is you got a guy in a tower, even in the DayZ mod, you got a guy in a tower with a DMR and he's just laying waste to everybody who comes along. If you use your brain and your cunning and your wit... You could take them out with a Tundra. You could take them out with a car 98 without a scope. You just have to be good. Whereas the skill in Rust is more based off of your quick reflexes, the way you can snap onto an enemy and pop them and prioritizing. A lot of people who play Rust don't realize that there's no maximum size groups. It's really easy to roll with the group of 20. I've done it before. I got kidnapped and then ended up being indoctrinated in a whole clan. Um, the interesting thing about Rust is you have to be quick. So if you're taking on multiple enemies, you down one guy. You do not finish them off. You down them. Then you down the next guy. Then you run behind a rock. You bandage. You get rid of the third guy. Then you go around and down them and loot as fast as you can because by the very nature of Rust, they're going to spawn in their base, grab their extra gear, and then come running for you. And they'll know exactly where you are. You do not have long to sit there. You you don't. It's not the Daisy effect where you're searching every pocket for every Walmart receipt that they have to find out if you have something useful. You grab what you can and you go. And I always remember that because if you're in the desert, you steal the wood, you leave the rocks and you move on. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of interesting because there are PVE elements to the game, too. They have uh, NPCs and you know, boars and bears. They even have an attack helicopter, the goddamn attack helicopter. Um, but like, you know, there are some PVE elements to it, but I, I think the PVE elements become kind of moot after a certain progression in the tech tree, huh? It's not just the progression in the tech tier tech tree. It's the server. And, and I played today cause I have not played the game in a couple years and I got killed by a wolf. Couldn't fight it with the bow. I went into a gas station, found a nail gun, and a grizzly bear came after me, and I went and dropped the grizzly bear. Let's be honest. The PvE in that game sucks. You have different biomes. You can get hot. You can get cold. The way they do drowning is when you are submerged and you're 100% wet, wet you drown. Um, the PvE elements are so far in the background, but that's also how they kill you. They're not a significant threat up front, and if you ignore them... They'll get you. But realistically, I think the best PvP PvE balance is when there's a full wipe, or at least shortly after a full wipe. Because as the server ages, then it just looks like this dystopian Judge Dread megatropolis where there's towers everywhere. There's no threat. You have groups of people running around and going, oh, a bear. Uh, okay, let's continue moving on. At some point, the PvE just loses all all risk to your health um and it's not necessarily your tech tree it's just where you place your base the resources you have stocked up and and let's be honest taking a revolver or thompson off of a guy that you killed with a rock because he was you know harvesting trees that can basically render the pve inert so it sounds like there's a lot of risk versus reward in the game and if you get your cards either lucky or you play them right, you can kind of get a pretty good edge. But you always got to be aware of the same thing that might happen to you. It's kind of a 
cool concept because it sounds mm-hmm. like it's unbalanced, but then as you further explained it, it sounded more and more fair. Not necessarily as a you versus the environment, but as your choices are what are giving you the advantage. Not necessarily you're just immediately overpowered kind of situation against right. the environment. And I think but, that's the best setting for this game because how games like PUBG, Firestorm, you know, Warfare, how they deal with this fast paced style combat with fast respawns is they put gas in. That way they control the conflict. But they still don't have a whole lot of PvE elements like fire and stuff that you can hurt yourself on. So I think Rust played their cards right for what they were trying to create. Uh, Rust is coming out with a new underground train rail uh, rails and system. Some new quality of life improvements such as dropped items no longer uh, can go through the floorboards of them. And hell, even a nice frontier-based DLC pack, which looks super slick. Yarl, what do you think of the fun cosmetic-based DLCs or add-on kits that don't add any advantages other than fun ways to enjoy the game visually and sometimes uh, to the ears of others? That is the best way to handle it, honestly, especially when you're dealing with a game with a lot of combat. I can understand selling maps in a DLC. Like, let's say that DayZ released a DLC for $15 and it was Livonia. Right. I can understand having maps as DLCs. I like the fact that they're releasing cosmetic packs. And I always tell people microtransactions isn't a sin in gaming. Pay to win is a sin. If you want to go and pay money to, to have a cool dress uniform or to have your armor more ornate than its counterpart that you'd find in the world more power to you it's cosmetic it just makes you look cool and since this game is centered so much around base construction because that's pretty much your life i think that is what makes the game alluring you get people with different dlc packs it's like oh that's really cool a game that does that well and very similarly is space engineers most of the dlcs with space engineers might add a few functional blocks but mostly cosmetics But if you don't have the DLCs, you're not shirked out of any of the experience. It's not like you're at a disadvantage because you can't afford it. Uh, And what's really cool about these kind of... Because I definitely support that, you know, it's good to have uh, cosmetic DLCs. It's good to have uh, graphical upgrades, all that kind of stuff. Like, I highly support many games to be all like, if you can give people 2K or 4K graphic packs, why not? And make a little bit of extra money uh, to keep your game going. I'm totally for that. Even if you're just selling cosmetics, it's an okay thing in my view book. As long as, again, it's a cosmetic. Because not all cosmetics are equal. There are cosmetics out there that can give you big advantages in games. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just a skin. If it looks like a woodland camo and it blends in with the forest area. Right. I'm sorry. That's an advantage. As nitpicky as it sounds... When you think about being equally fair to your players, DLC kits or better decor kits or whatever, make them as pretty as you want, make them look all spruced up, but never give them the advantage over the player who bought the base game or uh, wishes to play the DLC with their friends. And what's just really cool that Rust is doing this. To tell you the truth, no game is perfect. It still happens in Rust. There's still some DLCs where if you get a clever player they can make it a little more difficult. For example, camo netting, I never used it in Rust that much when I was playing it during lockdown because it was blatant that it was camo netting. But I just recently saw something in my Rust game when I ran past a half-destroyed base and I had to Google what the heck it was. There's a carpet out that looks like leaves with little flower buds on it, but you could place it horizontally on walls, kind of like how you can hand, hang animal furs upside down. So this guy built the high wood walls, which I I haven't seen those yet. Really high with barbed wire on the top. And he went out and scavenged enough cloth to carpet the walls in this forest. I didn't even see the base at first, and it looks so natural in the environment. I thought it was a, a place I could loot scrap from. I had no idea it was a player base. Until I went in and saw the stereotypical airlock and the the triangle pieces. That's a clever way to use it. I don't think the devs intended it. They're just like, look at this cool nature-themed carpet. And there's people hanging them on the walls, turning them in camo. I applaud that. Sir, you used your brain. Whereas that might be a disadvantage for everybody else. You went out and gathered cloth, which isn't exactly easy in Rust. 
And if you were to shoot me from that base, I wouldn't even be mad. I'd be like, take my horse, take my guns. <laughs> Excellent job. <laughs> You'd be all like, that tree just shot me. I'm just kidding. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was a, a loot spawn. I would have been like, oh boy, is that a gas station? Am I going to find some scrap? And then I just walk right into a trap. <laughs> Oh, man, that is absolutely hilarious. Well, I am glad that they're still updating the game with free content and offering uh, kits and DLC cosmetic uh, packages as well to keep the game funded. I think overall this is a good balance for the game from the developer side as well as keeping the community happy with new things to play with because content is always important in a game to keep it going. However, Jarl, let's go ahead and wrap this entire thing up with the ending of your impressions, in my impression, of Rust itself. What do you think of it? I do not care for the game very much, but it is not a bad game. I know that the game mechanics, especially the shooting mechanics, are absolutely one of the best features of the game. And I know a lot of my friends who host annual events where they just get all their buddies together and play on a private server for a month or two. The game has value if that's what you're interested in. My problem is I was sold on it being a survival game when I bought it back when it first came out. And I was like, mm, not really. This isn't really a survival game, at least not what I was expecting. But I love what it has. I think what turns me away, though, is the constant intensity, intensity and aggression and the general toxicity of the players. Um, that's just me. I don't really like those environments. It's not that I'm afraid to get shot and die. Otherwise, I'd never pick up Daisy ever in my life. But when you're trying to just gather a little bit of wood so that you could finish building your workshop and you're barely clothed, you've got a rock in your hand, maybe a little stone hatchet, and a group of 10 roll up on you with horses loaded to the brim with weaponry and they just gun you down and then shit talk you. To me, it's like, I'm not attracted to that. Um, and I know a lot of people don't give Rust the credit it deserves. Everybody kind of poos on Fallout 76. Fallout 76, I think, took a lot of inspiration from Rust. They're essentially the same kind of idea. The problem, though, is Fallout 76 sold itself as one of its RPGs when it should have sold itself as a game like Rust. Um, and I think that's why I was turned off at first. It was sold to me as a survival game. It wasn't really a survival game. I wouldn't play it, even if my friends were playing it. I think I'd find something else unless we were doing an event, like celebrating a birthday party or doing a fundraiser. Um, I think maybe putting two or three hours in at a time, and then I just get burned out. And it's not from dying. It's just from lack of things to do. You run out of things to do, and the only thing to do is go murder other people. So it's not for me, but it's still an excellent game. I agree on quite a few of your aspects. Um, it's definitely not a game for me as well. However, um, like you said, when it comes to group play and playing occasionally with you know some of my friends or whatever, I can see a lot of it. I did talk and post on our Twitter a little bit about what makes Rust Rust to some of our community. And some of the, um, the two responses I got, which were really not good responses, were that it's a game that allows you to do anything and everything. And it doesn't require such a large time investment to do that. Um, it's kind of a game that allows you to enjoy the survival elements of a survival game while focusing heavily on the PvP, being worried about getting, getting shot or taken out or your base, coming to your base. But then if you come onto your base and it's destroyed, you can re easily rebuild your base. A lot of these mechanics are really nice, but they're so quick to me, I almost feel like, kind of like you said, I lose a little bit of my enthusiasm for it because it's so easy to get all this stuff that it's definitely, if I'm not there for the PvP long-term game, it's not going to be good for me as a player. But you know what? I would highly recommend it to people who love fast, quick-paced things, who enjoy the survival game genre but don't really have the time to play survival games as long as they do now. Uh, Rust is definitely a game for them to try. So I do have a question for our community. What could be added to Rust to make it a better experience, whether you still play it or are thinking of returning to Rust? Well, folks, I think that is the end of today's episode. I really appreciate you coming here and talking to us about Rust. Let us know your thoughts and comments down below. And do not forget to thank my fellow co-host, Yarla Goats, my producer, Red Falcon. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you can. Ta-ta for now. Bye-bye!